Buenasera, everyone. Welcome to Sorrento. It is a very beautiful place. Wonderful to walk around at night. Uh, filled with a lot of tiny little secrets that we're going to learn about with a local expert, Cassandra Santoro. <laughs> Cassandra, uh, quickly, situate where we are in Sorrento. So we are in the main piazza, Piazza Tasso, which is essentially, you can go either way towards the train station or you can go towards the main city center with all the shops and the restaurants and uh, bars and gelaterias and pastries. I'll just keep talking about food. Right, <laughs> and then you are a professional travel uh, planner yes in this area right so I am a travel planner for Italy um, all 20 regions but I tend to specialize in the whole Amalfi Coast Sorrento Campania region um, a region is basically a state so this is the region of Campania and uh, just because I've lived here and worked here for a total of like 11 years or so so um, back plenty. and forth between living and working so I know a lot of stuff all right <laughs> let's walk around without further ado hey so we're going to take our sweet time. We're not going to go to New York pace today. Okay, I got I to gotta, <laughs> I, I gotta slow down. I got my, I got my heat wedges on, so I'll be going slow too. Oh, you have wedges? Can I show them? Yeah. Yeah. See, these, for anybody that wants to wear heels, yeah. women, but um, do not want to trip on the cobblestones, the oh. wedges are the way to go, for real. Oh, fascinating. Yep. Oh my, I'm almost panicking. Oh, and these yeah. have the strap because I'm... Gotta keep, keep balanced, helps me. Really, because oh. a lot of people, women will bring like uh, shoes here because there's copy places to go out, but there's yes. steps, you know. You know right. more than anybody. And so this cobblestones is as well. Mm -hmm. Which, uh, <laughs> one misstep, it could be very bad. Yes. I have a family member who, unfortunately, visiting Italy, did suffer a very bad misstep. Um, so yeah, this is a very serious issue. Yeah, <laughs> yep. When I arrived, arrived to Capri, I saw three ambulances, so... <laughs> oh my gosh, I hope it wasn't the shoes. I felt guilty I didn't get to them before. Right, so let's uh, pause over here. This 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 huge bar is like very famous, right? Yeah, this... Fauno. Fauno. So it's one of the original bars of the square, and it gets full like this every evening, probably in high season. In high season, yeah. So you yeah. can come for an aperitivo, or in the morning, a coffee, as you know, and a pastry, so. Okay, so I'm glad you mentioned that. The, the coffee I had here and the, and the cornetto is one of the best cornettos I've tried. <laughs> Uh, and I was actually shocked because I thought this was a little bit of the touristy spot, which it kind of is. Yeah. But wow, they have some good cornetos. But the thing is, yeah. uh, you know, what I said to you is that it, all the pastries in this area are really good because there's Italians and there's locals. I mean, there's foreigners and there's Italians. Right. So even if you're in the main city center, you're going to find a good cornetto. And, and cornettos usually are, got, uh, they get them from bakeries that make them? Yes, yeah, some of the people make them themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, some of them are pizzerias, like bakeries. Um, and they'll, some of the places, they'll, I'll order a, a plain one and then they'll ask me what I want and, and fill it up at the moment. So they do that a lot here. Get the jam one here, I found out. Probably gonna go tomorrow morning again. <laughs> and as we're walking around, so this is Tommaso Square, right over here. Do you, have you recommend anyone the trolley? What do you think about the trolley? You know, does it I show use, you the town. It does. It brings you around. It even brings you up on the hill. It's a good alternative. I'm like a oh, fan when it comes oh. to double decker buses. They have many ones here in like the Amalfi Coast in some areas, <laughs> um, or even the trolleys. It's a perfect alternative if you don't want to walk up hills or want to walk the whole day. Sometimes it's so hot, so it's nice. You know, a nice way to see it and pretty budget friendly too. So you get a sense of uh, Sorrento pretty quickly just by yeah. taking that right. Nice. And then you can just hop, run off if you see a good, uh, a good pastry <laughs> or gelato you like, you know? That's what I like. Uh, and, then, and then of course there's a lot of churches all around Sorrento, yeah. mm -hmm. which we're gonna bump into. Is there a patron saint of, this, of the city? Yes, um, uh, well the main one, which I was gonna talk about, um, if we can get to Marina Grande, yeah. is uh, Santa Ana. Santa Ana, okay. And it just passed. And um, actually, they always, on August 2nd, they do a big celebration mm -hmm. with uh, amazing fireworks. They canceled it this year because of the conditions. They were worried about the gatherings, but um, it's it, the whole, I saw a little bit of it, and they do the marching band. They have the typical, like, little kiosks out with food, and um, everybody just sits around, and they, you know, at times they will carry out a saint. Again, not this year, but um, it's an amazing, saint festivals in Italy, southern Italy, are an event you should make a point. 
to see if oh, you can. Yeah. Like uh, um, in Naples. Yes. Yeah. Uh, San Gennaro. San Gennaro, yes. Yep. They do the, the you wait for the, the blood. Yeah. Food. I did it one year. I waited in a church for seven hours. <laughs> so to, just, uh, <laughs> did you see the blood move? Um, it did. Yeah, it did. <laughs> Liquefied? It was worth it. It was worth uh, it. So yeah. we got to be careful crossing here. Lots of crazy traffic, but they do give you right away here in Italy. Yeah, let's. Uh, I want to show the the huge cliff. Yeah. Yeah, it's called the Naples Way. You just walk across the street without looking. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> or just give them the hand. Oh, <laughs> the You're like. So I want to show this before we continue off the main square. So Sorrento is so interesting because there's a huge crevice here. Was this man made? Do you know? I don't know offhand. Is this some natural. A, a, a lot of this is natural because of earthquakes and such from the volcano. I don't know exactly in which parts was man-made and which not. Right. Um, but a lot of it, it, you know, they just developed once it was, um, once there there was something, like there was a space, they'll just keep building from it. And that's what it's absolutely fantastic, which we talked about yesterday, the mountains into the sea, uh, making the most out of every space available for tourists, which is pretty cool. They're yeah. very efficient in making mm. the roads here in the Amalfi Coast and really stun in the Sorren Sorrento Coast. Yeah. Because they're two different coasts technically, right? Uh, yeah, Sorrento Peninsula mm. and then Amalfi Coast. So Amalfi Coast is basically Basitano. Um, oh, it gets technical to like Ravello. I, I mean, mm. it, it's really technical because there's also the Salerno Coast, which starts in like Minori, <laughs> which is a town right after Atrani and, and Ravello. So it's, it's a little technical, but if Basically, a lot of people will say the Sorrento Peninsula and Amalfi Coast, um, but there's also the Salerno Coast, but we don't need to yeah. get confused. And you don't want to offend half of the time. Exactly. <laughs> and I don't want to make up lies. So, so uh, you can see the layers of history over here, and you can see that, that these windows might have been used as regular windows before, but they are now empty for more structure. <laughs> yeah, five-star hotels. Five That's star. a great hotel, uh, Hotel Victoria, uh, Excelsior Victoria. Yeah. It's a five-star luxury hotel. Mm. So it has a beautiful terrace and they do jazz nights. Yeah, which I saw tomorrow they have like a guitar player playing jazz oh, guitar. Yeah. They, yeah. yeah, they usually announce they it through those minutes. Yeah. Cool. So everyone, if you don't know, this is Cassandra, Cassandra Santoro. <laughs> I'm pronouncing it very Spanish. How do you pronounce it Italian? Like that, because it's Toro is bull. Like, it's actually half Spanish, my name, funny enough. Okay. Because Toro is bull, so I think that's a, I think that's a perfect way to announce, announce it, to pronounce it. I don't even know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> to pronounce and announce as well. So uh, let me say hi to people as we're walking through. Uh, Ronald, yes, this is uh, Cassandra. Hello, Twin Labor Salesman. Hello, Gary. Uh, try to go into the Vittorio Hotel. Can you walk into the Vittorio Hotel? Um, yeah, do you, I don't know if this is going to be too... So, let's try one okay. gelateria here first. Oh, yeah, and then you we'll were saying go, you we'll want to go this way here. So, we're going to try... Primavera, which you just mentioned is a celebrity favorite. Celebrity. I think LL Cool J was there last week. Oh, cool. <laughs> He's from Long Island, no? <laughs> so he cooled down with some <laughs> there, yeah, gelato. I, was, I said, oh, I just missed him. I don't know where I was. I left to, to go on a mini trip. Would it be on the way that we walk towards the fishing? Um, no, but I'm, you know what? Even if we could see it maybe later, okay. or it's really central, so. Okay. Point it out. So we might try two different uh, gelatos. We're gonna start with this one first, which was recommended to me by a local. Hey, Matt Lee. Nice to see you here. Hello, Ashley. Uh, is she familiar with the Caralo Hotel? Uh, uh, the Corallo. See, Corallo. it's in the town next to uh, Sorrento called Centaniello. Okay. So you can actually walk there like 25 minutes, and it's um, it has amazing terrace. Mm. And it's uh, so all there's so many uh, rooftop terraces uh, as you can imagine for the uh, for the sunset, yeah. and that's one of them. So yeah, oh. it's a it's a it's a nice place to stay or just get a drink. Even if you're not staying there, you can have dinner or drink. Oh. So it's good to know. That's good that the hotels also have like bars or or restaurants that you can um, 
use. Yeah. Hey, Nina, nice to see you here. Hello, Mater. I saw LL Cool J's Instagram pictures when he was here. Ah, see, yes, I didn't make it up. It. They can't say a lot about that one. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like he was with like a Shaq or some, he was with somebody, like a, another, a, some sort of be, um, basketball player, if I remember. Well, in Capri, I went to a pizzeria that... Oh, this is really great. Gelato, too, and Granita. Oh, you like this gelato there? Okay. And Granita, yeah, sorry. I was, there's so many. Caroline says, I love Sorrento. I'm glad you do. Hey, Cassandra, grab that chair mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and stick with people and chat with them. Okay. Okay. Oh, yes, I know where we're, where we're do you going. Want, what type of flavor do you want? I'm going to try the lemon. I'm going to oh. just leave this here. I'm going to film you. So I'm no, ready. stick here. Stick uh, here. No, when, you, when you come back. I'm okay right now. You don't want anything? I'm okay. Know? Okay, so I'm going to buy a... Okay, okay let's see. Hi, Ariel. I can switch the camera. Okay. okay. Does anybody have any questions um, about Italy while we're waiting for Ariel to get um, some gelato? He said he's going to get lemon. There's also zesty lemon cream. Crema al limone. The green flash. Oh, I'm so glad you know the green flash. Um, yeah, a lot of people, um, I have to explain what it is, but I learned about it in Florida. Um, and for those who, hi Susie. Hi everybody, um, so I'm glad you know that. Try the pear and basil. Okay, I'm going to tell him to try the... My name is Cassandra, or Cassandra. Um, Ariel is the live video expert. I'm, I'm still new at this, so I'm a little bit slow. Oh, he's with Magic Johnson. Somebody t uh, discovered the... the some, and someone said they were telling you to get the pear and basil too, but I said you got the lemon, so... Oh, the pear and basil. I, I'm going to try the lemon because the lemon is Sorrento. Mm -hmm. Sorrento's all known for lemon. Uh, <laughs> we're going to use as much lemon as possible. Right, the goal right. is to see everything lemon. That's what I do even when I live here all the time. Right. Basil <laughs> is local also to the area, right? Basil is like such an Italian thing. But also, you will see also like pear and uh, ricotta, pear and ricotta cake. Uh, pear and ricotta gelato, so it's another also uh, local thing. I can take this down. So everyone, uh, we are at a place called Rocky. I'll show you the front in a bit. This is a lemon gelato. It's very white. I'm, I'm kind of surprised, but I assume it's like a good Because it's yellow. a very, um, na yeah, okay, so that's what I thought. I remember this place being very, it's all natural. Okay. So everything's very pure. And here's all the gigantic uh, list of gelatos. Yeah. Oh, they have pineapple and basil here. Ooh. And... I'll put that in the pizza. <laughs> <laughs> now we're getting crazy. <laughs> now we're getting... Alright, let's try this out and then continue walking. So here's a first gelato taste test. you never tried this place then. I have. I, okay. you, know, you know what happens? I've been coming here, as I said, for many, many, many yeah. years. Everything starts to blend. But um, I've tried probably... I try... Um, I think I told you before, I eat a lot of, or maybe I wasn't yeah. talking to us, talking to your friend. So here's a, a funny thing. I don't eat gelato a lot, but I eat affogato. Oh. Which is so good. It, um, so affogato is espresso over gelato. Uh, it's a really good like midday snack. Exactly. It gets it gives you the caffeine. I know as sometimes people, I, I am a caffeine person. I can drink like five espressos a day. So this is a good way to balance it with the ice cream. It feels like I'm also yeah. having a gelato, not a full espresso. 97% of Italians drink coffee. So <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's one of the highest ratios in the world. All right, without further ado. She, your sister. No, Cassandra, we are friends. Uh, we met through a mutual friend. Jennifer O'Brien, who's also a fellow, fellow vlogger. She's fabulous. And amazing, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, let's try this out. Lemon. Mm, that does look super white. Is it a sorbetto or like more like a gelato, the one you got? It looks like a gelato. I think, I think it's a sorbetto. Oh, it is? Yeah, mm. I can't taste the dairy. Mm -hmm. So it's a sorbetto. It's very lemony, of course. Uh, it basically tastes like a frozen lemonade. Yeah. You know, sometimes I'll say to people, because if you're, yeah. no, if you're from New York, um, a lot of people eat Italian ices. Mm -hmm. So I usually say get a lemon sorbetto or, you know, one of the fruit sorbetto and it's kind of like an Italian ice, if that's what you know. Right. You know, so it's a nice... Um, nice it's the closest thing you can get to Italian ice, but you go down to Sicily, there's actual Italian ices, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah um, there's yeah. a granita. 
So, um, granita, and the cool thing is you can get it like mm -hmm. where it looks like an Italian ice, where it's just slushy. You'll see the granita here yeah. too with lemon. Or you can get it where it's more like ice cream, and then they put it on um, a brioche or like a around uh, like yeah. cornet, um, around morning it's like, pastry. It's like a brioche, yeah. Yeah, yeah like a brioche. It's the same thing in English. Yeah. I'm like, it's the same thing in English, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, but then they put the gelato on there, or, or the granita in, and you eat it like a sandwich, or you can dip the brioche in the granita, oh, and, and it's a nice colazione, a nice breakfast. I didn't tell Cassandra ahead of time that we are going to have gelato, so I think <laughs> you're, you said you were full, right? Yeah, yeah I know. I'm, I'm oh, you like, don't eat too much gelato. I know. I, well, I had an affogato. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's why S feels to the few other people. <laughs> I didn't want to like her to feel it. I was like, oh. I'm not depriving poor Cassandra. No, no. I, I'm, <laughs> I have to be prepared. No, because I try not to have an affogato every day, but in yeah. the summer when it's so warm like this, but if yeah. anybody's looking for like a cold, I don't know if you talked about this, a cold coffee alternative. So you, you can get a shakerato. A shakerato, yeah. um, also crema di cafe, uh -huh. which is already made, so it's easy if you're on the run. Okay, crema di cafe. Yeah, that doesn't sound too appealing. It's like what, like a like a, a like a Italian version of a frappe. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Okay. exactly. With yeah, the coffee. They give it's like this big when you get it though, mm. which is like. You know, no venti size here. So they give you, when you go to the beach, you'll order it and it'll look like this. <laughs> Watch those calories. So I, I recommend this place. It's really good. It's really creamy. Um, a granita tastes more like an icy. Mm. This definitely still it tastes like a sorbet. Oh, good. Um, and, but it's super lemony. That's the only note I get. It's just pure lemon. <laughs> yeah, it's super, super natural. It's really good. It's very natural, kind of very straightforward lemon. And you can tell it's real lemon. Uh, because in the U.S. sometimes they use lemon extract, and that mm, you can't really taste the lemon. It tastes the sweet, but you don't taste the lemon. Yeah, and the yeah. taste is just even when you right. buy regular lemons. Right. It's just. Um, I mean, no, lemons, I mean, I'm, we have wonderful lemons, I don't want to offend the lemons of the U.S., but no, I mean, you've seen the size of the lemons here, and and you oh, can sure. eat the white oh, yeah. one. Yes, yeah. Yeah. let's go. Right, I think let's my continue. friend has, um, has a shop. He can still be there. Okay, cool. We can pass by. So this is the place, Rocky. I would recommend it. All natural ingredients. All right, thank you so much. Yeah. So, <laughs> here they are. Here's that lemon. That's that, why it tastes a little different. That lemon is the size of my head. <laughs> this is a true statement. <laughs> there's no denying it. How did it get that big? <laughs> and, and, you know, I'm, there's all this history that they used to use it for medical reasons in the past. Like to, to I mean, you can absolutely use it for motion sickness. Yeah. But, um, yeah, they used to have these stories that the hospitals used to use these big lemons for all different reasons to help heal um, sicknesses, viruses and things. So. Mm. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, of course, because it's a disinfectant as well. Mm -hmm. And the bigger the lemon, the more disinfectant you have. <laughs> this, this is another true statement. Um, I hope you come to Stockholm, says uh, Russia. Do you go to other parts of Europe generally? Um, you know, I don't travel. I used to travel a lot more. My first job in tourism, I've been to Prague and Greece and Stockholm. I have a very dear friend there. It's an amazing city. And I was there like just it's in the summer. Over here. Yeah. Um, I would like to, but right now it's mostly Italy. You know this place. What is this? This is kind of like a friars club or like a lions club. Is that oh, a good? Community? So it's a it's a gentleman's club. Yeah. Oh, no, gentleman's not the best term, but. Uh, but yeah, no, but yeah. it's. I mean, I didn't. I don't know the equivalent. I know it always changes, but you can see them hanging out there. Um, so it, you know that you can walk in if you like and. Um, it, it's funny because a lot of my associations with the men's clubs from Italy is the mafiosos. The Ravenet Club with uh, Gambino. <laughs> Gambino. But it's not always that. Yeah, no, Because it's an Italian tradition Gambino. that's very old, right? Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Like, some of them are just like local men just hanging out. But yes, that is something that's quite known, especially in the south of Italy. Right. Um, as well. Which way you want to walk um, up to you? We can keep walking this way. Um, uh, Din Din says this is a lodge. Yeah, it's almost like the Elks Lodge in, exactly. in America. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there's ahead, a sorry. few, there's some that date back hundreds of years, like the Knights of Alto Social, I think mm -hmm. it's called. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's, 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 this is the only one I know um, here in uh, the region that will be, is right out here in the public of the city center, so it's cool. Sometimes okay. they'll be in little bars um, that you'll just pass by, but this is a, a historic place, so it's great. This is a really good restaurant, too. Clemens says, don't mention the Nangreta too loud. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we don't say. I was like, yeah, that's sometimes. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm American. I, I'm yeah, they know, we're, they know we don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> or they'll assume we're CIA and then we're screwed. Yeah. But it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, Gary says, go to the Big Lemon Grove that's opposite of the Michelangelo Hotel. The Big Lemon Grove opposite of the Michelangelo Hotel? The, Is I, there a Michelangelo Hotel? I don't know off offhand, okay. but I'm sure there is. So there's like, there's hundreds of hotels in the region and it's pretty common to have lemon groves. So I don't know which one. They, okay, so the most popular lemon groves in the Campania area is the Amalfi Lemon Experience owned by a guy named Salvatore Accetto. Mm -hmm. um, and then there is uh, the Panza, which is a bakery in Amalfi. They have um, a, a big lemon grove as well. Um, but I, oh, there's also, um, there's the garden so maybe he's talking about the one at the end of the street. Um, mm, okay. I don't know the name of it, but maybe it's by the Michelangelo Hotel. That is possible. So okay. let's, someone asked a great question. Hans asked, and let's be very brief with this. Yeah. Um, what is the rule on masks? So right now in Campania, yeah. you're supposed to wear it outdoors. Okay. And um, all of Italy is indoors still. But in, in certain regions, they have their own rules. So the governor can make their own rule. So here, you're supposed to wear it outdoor, in indoor, or in crowded spaces. Mm, okay, okay, so, you know, essentially, um, the, if it's like a smaller street. But, um, yeah, it's... <laughs> right. <laughs> it's, up to, it's, up to, it's up to... It's up to debate, it seems. <laughs> it's, um, it's tough, you know, you, because also... Grabbing it. That's what's a uh, typical sandwich place. Oh, I've been meaning to try this place. Mm -hmm. I'll come back. So it is very good. Oh, mm -hmm. and this, one with avocado. And there, sorry, now I'm going. So this is a yeah. really tell, good. Yo, tell us all the recommendations. Alimentari, yeah. and it's actually a ficho, so they make their own cheese, and you can get like mozzarella or like little mozzarella di bufala, so you can come in in the morning and grab little like fresh, um, like tries of different um, stretch it, tell the different kinds of cheese that they make. Oh my God, I could just buy a little tiny mozza, buffalo mozzarella. Exactly, just yeah. Just get the cornetto, just put it on the cornetto. <laughs> well, there we go. I mean, it's I'll basically the same, <laughs> same thing, right? As a gelato on top of it. Um, but no, it's really good. Um, so cheese let's, and meat. Let's pause so I can show you. Doing a New York paste. Uh, Jack asked a great question. Have you encountered authentic gelato in, in the U.S.? Um, yes, there is um, a place in New York called Gentile, and it's in Williamsburg, I believe, or down by the, uh, the harbor. You're correct, yeah. It's yeah. right by Domino Park in Williamsburg. Perfect, yeah. thank you. So that, for me, is probably the most authentic gelato, in my opinion. Yes, and I know there is, and there's the one, there is a place in Carroll Gardens, Alberto, is that what it is? There's a place, I don't know if oh, hand, because it's one, been yeah. a long time, on 5th Avenue um, in the Carroll Gardens area. I saw someone ask before, and then you came back, I saw someone ask, isn't it authentic oh, yeah. to have a pile of gelato? They oh, asked about is it? it. Yeah. So here's the thing, um, technically no. Because <laughs> Rick Steves told me never go there. <laughs> <laughs> and we believe it. so yeah technically not it, um, it, it shouldn't be a pile of course but you can also tell by looking at the pistachio or the pistachio uh, gelato so the pistachio this is the easiest way to tell so it's supposed to be neon green right <laughs> so <laughs> he knows true american style <laughs> supposed to be almost gray. Oh, yeah, right. Almost gray. But he knows. Ariel's probably... Have you talked about it yet? I have talked about okay. it before when okay. I came here in 2019. Okay. So that I knew... Yeah. I figured you talked about the audience. Yeah. I saw somebody asked about it and then I didn't get to the question, but I wanted to. Yeah. So usually the pile... 
So the pistachio, yeah, don't go for something neon green. Mm -hmm. Probably synthetic pistachio. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the pile can't be too high because obviously then it's going to be very crystallized gelato. Yeah. It's going to be more American style, really. Yeah, yeah. and it's, you know, I, I teach it Not knowledge. so fresh. Yeah, too. they should make it fresh every day, um, whenever possible. And um, there's a lot of restaurants here. How can you judge? What's a good restaurant? If, say you don't have any Google Maps, you're not using any reviews, you mm. haven't talked to a local. How mm. can? Is there any pro tips on what to judge a good restaurant? Um, I mean, the old thing in Italy is seeing how much is on the menu. I don't know if I believe that so much anymore, but all Italians have always brainwashed me for years saying, if there's too much on the menu, mm -hmm. it's probably not a good sign, or a fixed menu. But, you know, I even have to say, um, even those things are changing because people are getting more into the tasting menus. They are, yeah. So it's hard to judge, but I think really if the menu is too, 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 too long, too big. It's like a Greek diner. Well, no, exactly. menus don't get as long as, as diners in the U.S., but if it's, yeah, if it's a few pages, then it should be a little bit yeah. of concern. Because it might, and if there's an asterisk uh, yeah. saying that it is frozen in small little prints, then of course you know that. Yes, That's so good. yes. Um, I, I know, it's tough because sometimes it's deceiving like they put these signs out and it yeah. throws people off, but sometimes they're good restaurants. So someone asked me once, oh, if they have those funny looking signs out, we shouldn't go there. And I said, not necessarily. I would first look at the menu because sometimes they just think you want to see the sign. Because mm -hmm. Italians like to see what the food looks like. So they think we like to see what the food looks like. Oh, nice. good point. Okay, so now all restaurants with pictures <laughs> it means that it's, it's bad. <laughs> Like we have sometimes with the association in the U.S. Exactly, exactly. So but, let's pause over here. Oh, this is yeah. the the guy that I told you about, the woodworker. Giuseppe Rock. Yeah, yeah. Giuseppe Rock. Right? I'll show just a little brief glimpse because I showed it before. So woodworking is a big tradition here in, in uh, Sorrento, right? Yes, yes, it's a tradition that, um, as I hate to say, but it's, it's not as common anymore. And Giuseppe Rocco told me himself yeah. that it's mostly because the young generation, it's a lot of work for little pay. Oh. So he's trying to keep it alive and teach people. Um, but, you know, it takes a, um, it, it's, I mean, he said um, he had a painting like this and he told, said it. He said it takes about a month, and I said, that's it? Because I was shocked. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so he said, this takes about a month to do. So think about, you know, the, the And he's a, he's a master. Exactly. So <laughs> a month, but for an amateur, that might take a, a few months or if not a year. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Wow. But um, yeah, like we talked about, um, you and I off camera yesterday, yeah. they have the jewelry boxes, they have coasters. <laughs> My friends in Italy love the coasters. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but no, that's it's. I gotta buy one. Where where can, where do you recommend me finding a coaster? There's some tradition. <laughs> I was gonna say that that's where you're gonna find it in every little woodworking shop because everybody okay. makes a coaster. But there's some main shops on the on the main corso, yeah. and I can point out to you after like a traditional family shop. Okay. Um, so check this out if you're in Sorrento in the near future. It's a pretty cool spot. Um, okay, so let me answer a few questions. What amazing art says Blue Sea. Kenya, nice to see you here. She says, wow. George says, not again. <laughs> He's kidding, of course, <laughs> because I showed it before. Oh, uh, I, I bumped into it when I first did my video in Sorrento. Ah, okay. Joe says, Cheesecake Factory menu is longer than basically anything I've ever seen. That's right. <laughs> oh, that's it's it's very long. This is. There's this no is. Italian equivalence, right? Of of the Cheesecake Factory. Um, yeah. Not here, but you know what? They are getting into cheesecake. <laughs> they, well, cheesecake, there is a... Tr oh, yeah. yeah so, well, they say like a little... It's made with regatta. Oh, yeah, we're at the sunset. And this is a nice... This is another hotel, but nice terrace to watch the sunset. in Pavarita, Grand Hotel Pavarita. Okay, cool. Let's catch the sunset. Before it goes away. On your first night here, were you able to catch a sunset or you were running? <laughs> I went to sleep. <laughs> you were to, I can imagine. You had a very long, long day. But this, this is quite beautiful.
It's funny because I, I know people who I tell them, oh, let's watch the sunset. And they're like, well, why you want to watch the sunset? <laughs> like, what's the point? <laughs> and you have to say, what I love about Sorrento yeah. is that every night, especially in the summer, you will see a, a, these normally it's full. And I love it. I always take pictures of the people yeah. watching sunset because it's the one thing we all, most of us, <laughs> yeah, can, of them, yeah. can relate to because it's just so breathtaking that you just have to stop. Right, right. You know, so. Helena says, oh, wow, romantic. So speaking of romance, where would someone, where would you recommend a couple to go to see the sunset? This hotel right here is beautiful. Uh, Serene, Grand Hotel uh, Bellevue Serene. It's also another five-star hotel. They have a beautiful terrace um, that you can watch. And also the Grand Hotel Favorita, which we just passed. They have um, like a really, they like have a trendy, where there's like some music oh, and stuff, but there's, oh. So many terraces. Somebody had mentioned earlier the Hotel Corale. There's so many terraces in Sorrento, um, and you know, even just spots like we went yesterday at Peter's mm -hmm. Beach to watch. You know, so no shortage of spaces. So here we have uh, Mount Vesuvius. Um, a little bit further, we have the rich areas of Naples. Mm -hmm. Where's Capri? So Capri is behind. Okay, um, we so can it's see. Around. So you can see like uh, Progenis Gif. It was a little bit clearer. Um, but Capri, we can't see directly from here. You could see Capri from the Massa Lubrense area. Quite fascinating because you can feel like you could touch it. Mm. Oh, cool. It's like that close. It's some of the roof terraces there. Oh, fascinating. Yeah. Awesome. Wow, this is breathtaking. And then I love how misty it looks yeah. as well. Yeah. I have to show you some. So photos it's misty because, because of all the pizzas being made. The smoke is billowing. <laughs> It's like the, the unlimited pizza ovens from, from Pompeii <laughs> to Naples, Pozzuoli. Yeah. Filling up. So everyone, just a uh, 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 sweet reminder. Uh, the largest super volcano on Earth, one of them, is right underneath these waters. Um, so this may very well end humanity as we know it. <laughs> but it's a gorgeous sunset, so remember, <laughs> keep that in mind. And, and the little, that, that's a very romantic thing to say, right, to, to people? You know, they, they really love their volcanoes here. They, they do. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Tell us a little bit about that. So, yeah, it, yeah they, they feel like many people, I don't want to stereotype, but many people feel that um, it is like a protector, especially Mount Vesuvius, maybe not Pozzuoli area, but they feel like um, Mount Vesuvius is like so beautiful, is a protector um, because it also helps with some of the weather. For the, and like I said mm -hmm. um, yesterday to you that the tomatoes um, are grown there, delicious, the wine. So they get the really good produce and, and wine from this amazing terroir of the volcano. So there's a lot of aspects to it, but also it's just like spiritual for a lot of them. Okay. You know, they, so I have friends that live in the Pompeii city. And the actual yeah, city. Which is very beautiful as well. Yeah, it's a nice amazing city to visit. churches, yeah. And, and they just feel like it wouldn't be the same without Mount Vesuvius. So. Did you, have you ever climbed to the top? I have. Yeah. I have. Um, it was, it's pretty easy in comparison to Mount Etna. Yeah. Have, have you done it? Mount Etna? No, no, I or, never. Or Vesuvius? I have not gone up to Vesuvius either. No. It's a crazy yeah. road to get up. Oh, it's so you can take a uh, car part way. Yeah, there's um you should take most of the way a driver a car. There's also in um with Pompeii, you can do there's like a trolley or a train, yeah. I mean, excuse me, or a bus that can transport you as well. Mm -hmm. And I do recommend that not to drive yourself because it can get crazy on those little roads on the volcano. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Right. It's like driving the Amalfi Coast. Yeah. <laughs> Please don't rent a car. <laughs> that's what that's what I've heard a lot of travel experts say. Rick Steves has said the same thing. Wow. How safe is this area for tourists? Ask uh, Hans. So really safe. This area is really safe, but as I always say to our clients, um, you know, you don't want to go around with a Louis Vuitton bag and um, or like a fancy Rolex or anything like that. And but I mean, for the most part, I would say I'm a single solo woman traveler and I feel really safe at all times of the night, too. Like if I go out in the evening or in the early, early morning for a hike, even I've done hikes alone, it's fine, you know? And I've heard that very often from uh, solo female travelers here mm -hmm. in Italy. Yeah, they yeah. feel very comfortable. I yeah. said yesterday, if you're not familiar with the area, not to do things on your own where you could get lost in the trails or yeah. things like that. But if you're just going to want to take a walk, you're fine. You know? And I'll mention something that I encountered. I, um, uh, at Capri, uh, 
there was a group of like four people in front of me who were arguing with the bus people and they were trying to buy the tickets and I saw them with all these Louis Vuitton bags and Gucci um, mm -hmm. espadrilles mm -hmm. and all these very fancy clothing and I was wondering wait why, why are they taking the bus and then as I take a closer look it was all fake Oh, really? I ended up realizing, oh wait, that's not real Gucci, that's Goosey. Oh, really? <laughs> that's funny because, you know, it, it, the, the, one of the fun parts of going in Capri, if you have the budget, is yeah. doing the convertible taxis. Right, I th like I thought that group would take a convertible taxi, like if fake. you have, it was fake. <laughs> it's like, uh, you know, it's the filter, it's the, it's the uh, human filter, the natural filter, I should say, the fake bags. The original yeah. filter is what I'm trying to say, before Instagram filters, It is the fake bags and things. And is there a culture of that? Because they, they were Italian, that, that group of people. Um, I like think, like in America, we have that. Yeah, type, I think it's the thing. same thing, okay. you know, it's, a, it's, it's nice to have designer stuff um but maybe it's better so it doesn't get stolen maybe they're smarter than us <laughs> yeah, right, you know? all right let's uh continue walking around hermy says yes i took the taxi in Capri because it's very nice open open air yeah it's so fun hey ruth nice to see you here uh, Mount Vesuvius last erupted in 1944. Yeah, that was the last major eruption. Actually destroyed part of New Pompeii. Um, Susie says, I'm not into status labels. Um, yeah, that's cool. That's the great thing about shops as well. Like mm -hmm. leather makers and exactly. all these other things. Especially in the north. There's You don't have to, I think what's great here, especially in the South, anything goes. So here you'll actually, I used to tell people, oh, don't wear flip-flops. Now you can wear flip-flops. Not so rare. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, especially in the beach towns and things, you know. So, um, Marina Grande. Yeah. Um, so I mean, this might look familiar to some people who have been here, because this is pretty common place. A lot of people like oh, to come. A car. So Kenya says this place is romantic all over. Yep, <laughs> that's why it's the honeymoon capital. Yep. Uh, I hope Ariel will go to Via de Matt. Oh, I'll look into it. There's a real Gucci. Oh, yeah. So, Via to his uh, shoe museum okay. as well. So, it's, um, yeah, pr the. Robert says my SUV would barely fit in here. Yeah, this is a, it might not even fit. <laughs> yeah. Well, Italians really don't have gigantic pickup trucks like we do in, in, in the US. Even in New York, you see gigantic pickup trucks. Yeah, sometimes now I'll see a Range Rover, and but it's like I still a mini Range Rover. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, that's clever. Well, they actually do make the SUVs still smaller here. The same models, but slightly smaller in Europe because uh -huh. Europe has stricter um, hello everyone, let me know where Cassandra, feel free to ask. Cassandra is a local expert, Italian citizen. It's the best of both worlds. Yeah. I think it's about time I almost put on my glasses because I'm getting to the point. <laughs> Good, see, I think I gotta do that. Hey, Teresa, nice to see you here. Hello, Susan. Susan, hope you're feeling well. Everyone, send hearts to Susan and Joe. Uh, they have have not been able to watch a few episodes. Uh, so do do give them a, a lot of hearts. Is Cassandra from Florida? Where are you from originally? Um, New York, Long Island. Tech, I was born on Long Island, but then I live uh, between Matt and, uh, Manhattan and Brooklyn when I'm in the States. Oh, cool. Hence your New York accent. You've retained it. Yeah. I think I still have it. I think, um, 
I'm proud that you can pick that up still. <laughs> yeah. well, don't, do Italians pick it up? I when know. you start speaking in English? I, I, don't, I, I feel like kind of, but sometimes they ask me where I'm from. Okay. I think I'm losing it a little. <laughs> I've cons I'm constantly asked where I'm from as well. Really? Yeah, you have like a mix, a little, like a mix accent as well. Right, because Spanish is my first language. Right. Okay. Um, and sometimes I've encountered this more outside of Sorrento in the not so touristy areas. They just assume I'm Italian. Mm -hmm, I can yeah. see that. You also have the, the look. You dress Italian. You know, oh, like really? Interesting. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, well, someone asked, is this a new shirt? Yes, it is. I got it from an Italian store. It was really cool. <laughs> <laughs> much love for the moderator, says Kenny. Yes, moderators, thank you so much for keeping the good vibes in the comments. I really appreciate you. No, I don't talk like I'm from Brooklyn. Oh, look at this guy over here saying I got, don't got a New York accent. What are you talking about? Marcos, too bad he's not here with a stat. Now, I, I, I really remember I was telling you about my friend that's half Greek, half Bay Ridge, so he's, right. it's fascinating to me. He could switch back and forth like... That is fascinating. <laughs> On the street. So, even Italian nationals, right? Because they So uh, I'm gonna speed walk. I'll yeah, meet yeah, you at the end of the tunnel, okay? I'll meet you at the end of the tunnel. Okay, we have service. In a there we go. So this is the fishing room. All right, all right. We are back. So okay. So what were you we saying? Yeah, no. This is um, this is before we talked about Santana, mm -hmm. the patron saint. This she's specifically the patron saint of this area, Marina Grande. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. She lived here? Uh, it's a more of like that she's the protector of the fishermen and the Oh, area. okay, okay. Mm -hmm. In that context, okay. Yeah. I see. Mm -hmm. Also, Santa Ana, the patron saint, patroness saint of fishermen. Mm -hmm. Wow, this is beautiful. I would not have known this being a... If I were a tourist who didn't research the place beforehand i would not have known about this it seems yeah. like a little bit of a secret right yeah right so this is uh like a little bar and these all the restaurants get very full here in the summer so a tip is to reserve in advance how far um, in advance <laughs> um <laughs> in in august maybe two weeks two if you want to like get at night okay. if you want to guarantee a spot i mean um it can vary, you know, maybe you just need a week, but if you're coming here on vacation, you say, I want to eat in Marina Grande, I'd say call two weeks before. And usually what's the maximum parties for most of these restaurants? Um, if you book in advance, you can bring 10 to 15 people. You just have to book way in advance for that. Okay. I would say like a month in advance if you have a big party, but you know, a family of two to four, or even a solo traveler two weeks before. And as a solo traveler or a couple, you can you can come in at restaurant opening and sometimes get inside. Yeah, anybody you can try that, you know, because obviously like anywhere, some places don't, people don't show up for dinner or if people are late, they'll give their seat yeah. to someone. So um, it's absolutely easier to be a solo traveler and maybe they'll say, sometimes people are very nice here and they'll say, oh, join our table. This happens quite often. Oh, but yeah, so if you, if you yeah. are at a long table, but... Um, yeah, I mean, I still would reserve, even as a soul, just so you're comfortable and get a good seat. Well, good know? to know. And some of them do have WhatsApp reservations, so if it's a little bit tough getting a local number, you can uh, yeah, yeah. find the restaurant that has Absolutely. WhatsApp reservations. And, and at least one person I found in each restaurant speaks English. Oh, so okay. if you don't feel comfortable using WhatsApp, usually at least one person, or just have, you know, if you, if you are traveling, even your Airbnb host or, um, or a hotel, it's, you know, obviously don't feel shy to ask them as well to assist. Hey, POV, nice to see you here. Um, slam that like button right now so other people can see Sorrento live. A lot of people who subscribe to the channel see mostly the New York videos or the major city videos. So YouTube algorithm just assumes they don't want to see this. But some people really do want to see this. So slam that like button so they make sure that it is brought over to them. So let's help teach the YouTube of algorithm that this is a beautiful live video to see. 
And wow, how these hotels are built into the cliff sides. Uh, I would recommend taking the ferry, says uh, Clements, to the island of Ischia. A lot of people keep uh, recommending me Ischia, or I might be mispronouncing it. Uh, Ischia. Eschia. Mm -hmm. Ischia. Mm -hmm. um, why? <laughs> so Ischia is another volcanic island. It's absolutely beautiful. Actually, the sandals I was wearing yesterday were from Handmade in Ischia. Um, but uh, yeah, it's another beautiful place. People probably recommend it because it's a very laid back version of Capri. Okay. Um, and it's a little bit more family focused. Uh, there's the, um, there's castles and beach clubs. But yeah, it's it's. I would say it has a lot of the same aspects of Capri, but much more laid back. Oh, nice. That's but, why. And there's also Projida close to it. The very 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 colorful island. That's the culture capital of next of 2022, actually. Why why is it colorful? How so? Um, it's another fishing village, um, yeah. and uh, they a lot of these places have restrictions on what you need to color your home. Almafi is one of them. Oh, interesting. Okay. So that's <laughs> that's how it stays colorful. But um, oh. it's very fit, very very famous, especially for Instagram. Um, but it's great to have a, a delicious seafood um, a meal, and it's a quick ferry ride from Iskia. Oh. So you can do like literally 25, 30 minutes. You could just be over in Progina. We can get to Iskia from here, from uh, Sorrento. Yeah, it takes about an hour on the ferry. Mm -hmm. well, pretty, pretty, pretty long, almost like to Positano as well. Mm -hmm. All right, so where would you want to walk? Where would you want to show? Um, if you feel to walk a little bit down yeah, to see. Yeah, let's, let's do down there. Um, so this is also the place where if anybody's feel, uh, familiar with Sophia Loren movies, we're going to see something right now. And there's an exhibit also, Sophia Loren's photography. Yes, uh, in the community. Which is, it actually closes at 10, so it's pretty late for a museum. But Sophia Loren, what's her association with uh, this area of Italy? So she lived here, and I believe now she lives in Switzerland, but she was born in Pozzuoli, the area where the super volcano is. Oh, okay. Um, so she, I, they said she had houses in Priano, in different places, but this is from the movie uh, of Pane and Amore, or in translation, Scandal in Sorrento. Scandal in Sorrento. Sorrento? So it was filmed down here in Marina Grande. I love that. So, ladies and gentlemen, Sofia Loren. A lot of people have been asking for a little bit of Sofia Loren. I'm unable to do a live video with her right now because she's in Switzerland, but <laughs> at least we can show a few photos. And the light shined exactly where we needed it. Too. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> it's the, the guardian angel of Sofia Loren. <laughs> oh. oh. Sophia Loren is a little bit mad. <laughs> she she didn't want to, she too much too much attention. <laughs> too much, right. She need a little break, you know. She's trying to. <laughs> so this is uh, it's filmed on location then. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. and this is it's a, it's it was on Amazon Prime. I just watched it before I left New York, mm. um, or Netflix, one of those. But um, if you haven't seen it, it's called Scandal in Sorrento in English or Pane in Amore if you want to watch it in Italian. Um, excuse me, it's both in Italian, but it, the, if you see it on an Italian channel, like, um, you know, if you're downloading it somewhere, it'll be Pane and Amore. But if you're on Netflix or Amazon Prime, it'll be Scandal and Sorrento. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's so cool. So let's see, that is where we were just uh, sitting, right? Or standing? Um, yeah, maybe. Oh, yeah, yeah just down just here. Just a little bit further. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, right over there. So, yeah, exactly where we were, uh, close to where we were standing. That's, that was the, that scene. Exactly. That's so cool. And then I haven't figured out which of the buildings was her home in the movie. Okay. I'm still trying to figure that out one day. Somebody Why is there such a... We're, we are in the line now. Um, yeah, so we're, uh, they think we want to eat, because this is a super famous place called okay. Da Amelia. Yeah. And uh, Da Amelia, and a lot of, they're all waiting in line to eat. But we can go around. So, so we, we uh, inadvertently got into a line for a famous restaurant. Does this mean that now we have to eat? I mean, <laughs> try it. Let's continue walking. <laughs> you know, we take a sign. We don't deny signs. <laughs> right, that's true. Especially How do you, what's a good uh, Italian expression? What's a good Italian expression for like, touche or that's right or... Uh, uh, yeah. Like, see, uh, like, uh, see, va bene. I'm trying to... I, you know what expression I like? Bo? Like, bo. I don't know. Yeah, bo. Bo. Yeah. Bo or bo. bo. That's actually made fun of in the film Spider-Man Homecoming, which is takes place in Venice. Really? I never yeah. saw it. Yeah. Oh, Far from home, sorry. Spider-Man Far From Home. Look at this, very, very busy everywhere. Yeah, this is crazy busy. Wow. Mm -hmm. 
Lots of lines over here. So let me show the restaurants. Yeah, sure. I'm just gonna get out of the way. And they're all very good. You can't make a wrong decision here with the fish, local fish and dishes. Mm -hmm. Cool. So uh, a lot of people are always afraid of encountering a tourist trap, like in New York. Mm -hmm. um, here, the risk is not too high. No, I wouldn't say. You know, there's. I mean, there's some. There's probably like total six restaurants. The only thing to to know is. Um, some of the restaurants, like the ones on the back pier, yeah. are a little bit higher price. Oh, these are higher end restaurants yes. because they have, oh, they're on the water. Exactly. So that's the only big difference. Otherwise, I'd say you're going to get a pretty authentic and delicious meal um, mm. wherever you go down here, in my and, opinion. And that's why here we see Ristorante, but these other places would be called Osterias or, or Tratorias. Uh, tratorias sí. yeah. It's it's, oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, it's Cassand and Cassandra's opinion. What's the nicest part of Italy? Uh, I know I'm gonna say this area. I really, really, really love um, where I typically live, Atrani, Atrani, next to Amalfi. But this whole area is for me my favorite. The whole region of Campania, even um, Naples, it has its own beauty. The hills and the countryside of Naples is called Irpina and they do wine there. Um, so I love this area because you can get wine, mozzarella, good food, fish. I know I'm a little biased, but... That's so cool. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, yeah, it's, uh, it's like asking me what's my favorite part of America. That's a great question. Fair question. But uh, if you were asking me what's my favorite part of America, I would say New York uh, almost immediately. But that said, if you had to choose somewhere outside of this region, uh, say someone's visiting Sorrento, mm -hmm. they're reaching out to you, you plan this amazing trip, but mm -hmm. they want to do something that's the opposite in Italian culture, but the opposite. Where Trentino Alto Alduci. Okay. By the Dolomites. That. Repeat okay. that one more time. Sorry, so <laughs> Trentino Alto Alduci is the north, all the way north, um, by the Dolomites. So you can, if someone, sometimes we have clients that say, I don't want to go to the beach in the summer, but I want to be in nature. And this is the perfect thing. Okay. Because you, you can hike and so much greenery and fresh air and delicious food, but more German, Austrian food in the north. So it's cool to, you know, be like, you could, they say like, ciao, buongiorno, but then they say danke. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. So there's a little bit of German in, in the words. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like uh, going to New York and then after that going to Alabama or, yeah. or, or, or New Orleans. Literally, yeah. yeah. It's a complete culture shock, but it's um, a beautiful, breathtakingly beautiful area to explore. So I love these tiny little bars that you always see like a few locals hanging out in. Yeah. And they're having wine and kind of just chilling. I know. Uh, I feel like, I feel like it's, that is like to me real Italy. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing too about this, you know, a lot of people will say to me sometimes like, oh, Amalfi Coast is a very touristy place. There's a lot of locals here. Mm -hmm. And like you said, even the Italians that come visit here, I have friends that have visited me from Tuscany and it was the first time they've ever been here. <laughs> yeah. And they were like, first time they had a Naples pizza and they were like, this is the best day ever, you know? So a lot of local life here for sure. I'm glad you pointed that out. Oh, that's mm -hmm. good, that's good to know. Mm -hmm. um, and these are apartments. Or so no, it seems like some of them are B and Bs. Yeah, definitely a lot of Airbnbs down here. Okay. In an apartment, like um, owned by apartment companies. Um, so yeah, there's if you you will find quite a few. Mm -hmm. um, so it's nice if you want to be, you know, right here on the water because this is a free beach. Um, it's one of the only places in Sorrento it's a free, free beach. beach. Oh mm -hmm. cool. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's awesome. And uh, black sand, a lot of black sand in, in uh, Italy, I've noticed. Yep, all volcanic. So it gets very, very hot today. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, yeah. I, I made the mistake in Greece because Greece also has black sand. I made the mistake of going barefoot in the uh, in the black sand beach with rocks. <laughs> it almost burned my feet. It, it was that hot. I do. I do sorry. No, I just, I just gonna yeah. say I agree. But even at night, the water still looks blue. It's beautiful. And you know, it, there's, it's, it's amazing to me because it's boats and it's a port, but it's still beautiful to swim. Joe know? says, sorry to interrupt, no, uh, Joe says Cassandra has some great information. She's giving me a run for my money. <laughs> well, that's why, that's why I asked Cassandra to collaborate. 
So I didn't need to research all of this. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, no, I'm glad. I'm happy to share. Uh, there's only so many cap, uh, so much space on the captions of Instagram to share all this. So I'm happy to do it with you. you know? Right, right. Again, everyone, travel Italian style. Travel Italian style. Uh, Cassandra is on Instagram, and that's your website for your mm -hmm. travel planning services. Have you ever met I Dress Italian? I have not, but I've been in places, like, I've just missed him in places. Okay. okay. Yeah, like, I was like, hey, I was there yesterday when I see his video. <laughs> One of the very few Italian live streamers that does it in English. Oh, right. Yeah, this is yeah. a good, um, that's something I just learned from you. And what's your favorite restaurant in this trip? Um, Porta Marina, we passed. It was the one in the middle of the super uh, famous one and the one in the end, but they're all really good. But okay. I, I tend to go to Porta Marina a lot. And that was the place where we were trying to go yesterday, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and see, just to give you an idea, oh, there's Sophia Loren again. See, she's up Look at that. Sophia Loren. And oh! Uh, um, La Dolce Vita? La Dolce Vita. Yo, La Dolce Vita with uh, Anita Eckbert. And do let us know the name of the actor. I forgot his name. Oh my gosh. Directed by Fellini. But I don't think Fellini filmed here. I don't Maybe. think so. No, I don't think so from what I know. Oh! Uh, the film Roma. Not to be confused with Afonso Cuaron's Roma. Mm -hmm. He filmed in Parts in Posita. Ah, I don't know. So, it was uh, 1970s. See, I'm learning things from you too. This place is So, too. Cassandra, you actually know the writer of Under the Tuscan Sun. Let me show you this restaurant. Yeah. Ooh, okay. Before we talk about Under the Tuscan Sun, what's yeah. your favorite wine to get in, in Sorrento? Okay, so uh, here, this is a. Ask, I'm gonna uh, unspecified beef. Yeah. So, Falangina and Fiano, there's very typical white wine in the area, but my favorite. So, my friend owns a winery off of uh, near Naples, near the Campo di Frey, the, uh, the burning fields, and she makes a sparkling Falangina. It's very, very difficult to find, okay. but it's my favorite wine in mm. the area. It's Absolute a favorite wine. White wine? Um, yeah, it's a white wine, white sparkling, but you can also just get still Falangina, uh -huh. which is delicious too. Oh, fascinating. So, so this is a, basically the last restaurant um, of the area. It seems very modern. Soul and fish. Mm -hmm. My friend, who actually is a sommelier, they own a wine, a wine company called Swirl the Glass. They do yeah. wine tours. Yeah. Um, this is their favorite place to eat, so that's a good, it's probably a good sign. Oh, they enjoy it. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm so tempted. <laughs> I'm, uh, I am so full because I ate before, but it smells so good. So let me describe the smell for everyone. It's super fragrant. There's so much uh, smell of, of gamberi, of shrimp, mm -hmm. and uh, what else? This, uh, let, let us know what else you smell. I yeah. smell, because I'm allergic to shrimp, I, try and I, and I, I smell a liche. <laughs> Uh, the sardines and the anchovies, the fresh, because I love it, as I said yesterday, marinata, marinated, but yeah. also fried, so I can almost smell like how it's lightly fried uh, aliche. Yeah, smell? oh yeah, so th they do make the fried uh, sardines and anchovies like they do in Rome. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, fascinating. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is there a different recipe here than, than in, in Rome, like for fried uh, fishes? Um, I would say no, but mm -hmm. what's important to know is that the aliche are very local here. Mm -hmm. um, they come from, a lot of the um, aliche come from a place called Cittada. You can also get them, and you can see them swimming here. When you're swimming, yeah. you can see the aliche. So they come right from Sorrento, but they also can come from Cittada, Cittada. which is a, a, a fishing village on the Salerno. Okay. So super famous for oh, their anchovies. So that's the only difference, I think. Is there anything else down here? Um, this is just like some homes and um, just like a little bit of local life. And the entrance to one of the fancier, oh. other, the last fancy place. You're capturing a mugging in action. <laughs> <laughs> after, see? After I just went through saying it's safe. <laughs> um. Yeah, let's check out the local life. Let's see how the houses look here. Uh, all right, everyone, we're going to stick around for about 10 more minutes or so. Feel free to ask any last remaining questions to Cassandra. Um, this yeah. is uh, the, what's the port, what's it called again? The, uh, Marina Grande. 
Marina Grande. And something that's really funny yeah. is that this is the smaller of the two ports because where you came in on the ferry is Marina Piccola and this is Marina Grande. So it's very confusing to people because the bigger port is called Marina, it's called small port. Okay, that is confusing, yeah. So this is a fantastic restaurant, a little bit more higher end. Um, and I'll wow. show you something, we'll go around. So many iconic actors and actresses um, say Millie. Yeah, there's there's a lot. Do you know of any others that have come here? Oh my gosh, well, uh, so many. I, um, Heidi Klum was here the other day too. Heidi Klum, oh yeah, Heidi Klum was here. She got she, married on a boat. And she was actually in Greece as well, so. When you were there? Yeah. <laughs> oh. So this is a super luxe villa. It's um, new from this year. Yeah. And if you look over, there's actually a pool. Mm. Oh, an infinity pool. So there's Almost. a little, Yeah, so it's like a little pool. That's so cool. So yeah, it's a, it's a very common, in, you know, for people to rent villas. And wow, the views look so cool. And So the light there, I've asked several times, and they said it was just like a, like a church area. So, but this is the whole Sorrento Peninsula. So I believe the last, um, the last of the of where all those lights are would be Vico Quince, if I'm not wrong. Mm. So it's one of the further on the Sorrento Peninsula. Okay. And it's a, it's a little bit bigger. I don't want to say it's city, but it's a little. Oh, bit Oh, that's big. still Sorrento, right? The Sorrento yeah. Peninsula, yeah. But well, it's pretty um, huge. It makes its own like little bay almost. Mm-hmm. All right, um, Heidi Klum is following me. Interesting. Yes, she is, indeed. She sure is. <laughs> indeed, she is. Um, Ooh, so, nice. feel free to ask anything. George, I uh, in, mm -hmm. in Rome when they invited me in, the Greeks and the Luxembourgians and the Romanians, one of them looked like George Clooney a little bit. It was probably George Clooney under the cover, enjoying he, Rome. He looked like George Clooney meets Tony Danza. Oh, that's an interesting <laughs> combination. Uh, George Clooney, has he come in this area, parts of Italy? You know what's so funny? I ne I've never heard, I'm sure he has, but I've never heard of it because he does stay up north. They were saying, they're like, oh, you know the pandemic's bad because George Clooney hasn't been here in two years. <laughs> I was like, I guess that's how we know the pandemic's been bad, you know. Uh, what other major celebrities have been here recently that you know, or, or frequent here? Um, J-Lo is just here. Yeah. Um, did we talk about that yet? J-Lo, yes. Uh, uh, he, and Capri, she was. Yeah, Capri. Yeah. Um, into Sorrento. Because, it, it, you know, it's so strange. Because, you know what, there's a lot of people here. You can't really stay private. Mm -hmm. um, so they will come to Primavera. Sometimes there's a lot of soccer players. I saw on their web, on their, um, who else, um, who else has come to Sorrento? You know, a lot of the people have, somebody was just in Amalfi. Oh, they're doing a film in Amalfi. I saw mm -hmm. a casting call, but I didn't see the details of what they're filming. But that'll be interesting. It's from August to October. Oh, interesting. Do let us know if uh, you know what's f being filmed here. Yeah. Uh, hello, JK. Nice to see you here. She looks like Kristen Kala Cavallari. Cavallari? I don't know. Oh, do yes, and Ben Affleck. He was here. Um, and a little secret is she she found him on the same place as A Rod. I mean, hey, they like every. Who doesn't like the Amalfi Coast? <laughs> but there's a lot more to explore. <laughs> I get it. Oh. They bring other women that they had in their lives, but J-Lo <laughs> is now doing that, which is very, very funny. Um, hello, you two. A film what? Uh, here in the Malfi Coast, there's a film. Yeah, there's going to be filming in Amalfi. I will let you know, Ariel. I'll try to send you the article after because it's in Italian. Cool. But they're going to be doing a film in Amalfi, filming from August to October. But I don't know what it is yet. Nina asks, what's the hardest Italian word to pronounce? Um, um, I'm going to say anything with a gli, gli, G-L-I. Anything I cannot do. Yeah. Anything. It's a bit weird, yeah. Why but, do they have that in this language? Well, what's, what's the most common of the glee <sighs> words? I probably I avoid them, so I, I'm trying to think. No, there's another uh -huh. word that I... You know what's so funny? Mm -hmm. One word I really avoid is, and it's impossible to do this, is the word word, parole. 
because it's also difficult for me. Parole, that's so. Italians get so frustrated with me. Like that's the easiest word, but for me, parole yeah. is is difficult. It's like saying the word lisp. Yes. Yeah, it's also yeah. A, a very, and now I'm very, making a lisp, but I say <laughs> lisp because I'm so mental. It's yeah. very very hard. Uh, did Cassandra grow, grow up speaking Italian? I did not. Mm. I learned when I started uh, working here on my own, mm -hmm. actually. So uh, crazy. Wow, that is impressive. Mm -hmm. uh, do you know Alex and Minnie, Mimi, uh, for, uh, or Nick Positano, Nicky Positano? So Alex and, me, and Minnie, and Mimi, or Minnie from um, Icon, they also do the Five Minute Journal. I've never okay. met them, but we have a lot of mutual friends. I know she loves Positano, and yes, I know Nicky Positano. I've been in her video uh, before. Mm -hmm. um, she is, uh, we have mutual friends, so we've, mm -hmm. last year during the pandemic, we were doing some hiking together. Because oh. we developed a little hiking group. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, also, so, cool. so you, you do know them. Mm -hmm. um, Alright, let's see what else people ask. Travel Italian style, travel Italian style. Oh yeah, what made you choose that name, Cassandra? Um, it was, so I wanted to make it call, I wanted to call it Atraversiamo Holidays mm. because I loved E Pray Love at the time and you know oh, she cool. loves that word. Oh, Atraversiamo? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Um, uh, I thought it was uh, Andiamo. She likes Atraversiamo. Oh, yeah, Atraversiamo, that's in, the, in the, the scene where it's like, let's cross. Yes, let's, let's cross, cross over. Atraversiamo. Uh, at and that's an easy word, uh, yeah. thank God, because it's a beautiful word. <laughs> right. I mean, obviously that's why she picked it. But And then I remember uh, my uh, business coach mm -hmm. at the time said to me, I don't even know how to spell that. What, think of something easy, like travel Italian style. And I'm like, sounds good. <laughs> it is a lot easier than Atraversiamo, yeah, because uh, I think a lot of Americans would have a little bit of tough pronouncing that yeah. and how to spell it you know uh do you have to take the ferry back tonight no i am taking a train to florence so i'm taking two trains i'm taking the circum vesuvia uh, and then i'm taking the high speed rail to florence it's pretty easy but the circum vesuvia is not so reliable so do plan ahead yes yeah. uh do you plan oh let's see um cassandra reminds me of cassandra <laughs> <laughs> Nina says you attract cool co-hosts. Oh, thank you so much, Nina. We actually did many, many videos together. Uh, we've done uh, like two episodes of, tr of Real Italy in New York. Mm -hmm. and I think you appeared in one of my New York Live videos. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we've done a few things together. Uh, Ariel has the humidity. Yes, it is humid now. Because yeah. Because it's raining in the mountains. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you can see it in my hair too. Jeez. Um... And Ashley says, yeah, cool. The Netflix reality show Selling Sunset is filming in that area. Oh, good to know. Thank you. Yeah. And what a lovely lady. I would choose her to help uh, get the right uh, holiday for me. Yeah, so Phil's oh. coming from Cornwall, England. Oh, great. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Phil, feel free to reach out to, to Cassandra, TravelItalianCell.com. Thank you, Phil. And, all right, if you have any last remaining questions, feel free to ask. Does, does the F train go to Florence? <laughs> You know what? If you drink enough fel sparkling falangina, it might. <laughs> you know, um, I, I keep mentioning this in my own videos. New York is not without cool geography like Capri. I mean, Capri yeah. is immense. It's mm -hmm. more than a thousand plus feet tall. Mm -hmm. But we have the Palisades in, in the Hudson, in yeah. the Bronx and New Jersey. Yeah. Wouldn't it be so cool if we built Capri in the Hudson? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. literally build a, a neighborhood within the, the cliffsides? I mean, we have the new little thing I haven't seen, the island, the funny little island. We, yeah, we have Just that. Put that in the middle. <laughs> right. So, everyone, hashtag Capri in the Hudson. <laughs> and um, she reminds me of Kristen Chenweth. Oh, Chenweth. who is this? Christians. A lot of Christians. Do, do let us know. All right, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, people can find your work at Travel Talent Style on Instagram. Uh, what's the latest video you posted? You posted something very... Today recently? I'm giving tips on um, Amalfi and Atrani. So where I like to go as a local, and it's only going to be up 24 hours. Um, so they're Instagram stories. So um, I just posted them before I met with you. So they're fresh, oh, cool. fresh on the Instagram stories. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. All right, check that out. And then now uh, for your travel planning services, how do they usually work out? How does one work with the travel planner? Yeah, sure. So the sure. most important thing first um, is that we chat. Okay. and connect and you tell me a little bit about your trip we mm -hmm. then help develop a schedule like how many days in each place as you know it's important to be able to see place and not rush through it 
Um, and then um, we start looking at accommodations and um, itinerary planning. We do charge a consulting fee in advance because um, we work more as consultants. And you know, we want to. We literally every um, thing except the plane to and from Italy. We will be there for you, and we do 24-hour concierge service once you're here. So we'll plan those accommodations and itinerary. But if you're here and you're like, oh my gosh, Cassandra, I can't speak Italian, you can call us or Vincenzo or I, and we're there for you um, until you're back on the plane heading back. Or maybe stay. <laughs> you don't know, we can just hang out and have some wine after that. Have you had any clients who have stayed for, for good? I haven't had anyone that's actually stayed, yeah. um, but I've had some because the only reason is because they stayed like 84 days. Okay, okay. And yeah, they were passed, but I have somebody that's coming back, that comes back every year. And like, like, have you had a client who has traveled solo and, and, and basically married someone here? No, no uh, thank God I would have been jealous. Rick, <laughs> Rick Steves has, a, <laughs> touche, Rick Steves has an excellent episode. He interviews three American, two American women, I think one is English. Uh, who who uh, came to Italy, fell in love, and just stayed here. Can um, I tell a super quick yeah, thing? Yeah, um, do sorry, do this is a really yeah. cute story. So yeah. speaking of which, which um, so on Capri, um, I have very dear friends. I'll go in a couple of weeks and stay there overnight. So my friend is from Australia, Holly, and she does not like the beach. So she went to Capri in March when it was rainy and cold um, <laughs> just to go because she needed like a little escape. She's a lawyer. Yeah. She was eating by herself every night at the bar in the hotel and they said, just go to this restaurant. They set it up in their mind. They had it in the back of their mind, these clever guys. They said, oh. well, um, my son John Luca has this restaurant. Mm -hmm. Just go eat there. He likes, he'll be very kind to solo traveler. They literally fell in love at the moment. <laughs> he made her stay and she doesn't, to this day, they're now married with two kids. They have um, a beautiful on Anna Capri, yeah. uh, called Michelangelo, mm -hmm. and they have two beautiful babies, and they still, she still does not speak a perfect Italian, and they communicate. They have the most beautiful relationship. So let me let me pause you because yeah. we had audio issues. I have no idea what's happening. Oh, no. uh, something happened with the with the with the signal. I'm not sure what happened. But uh, let's let's go back to the beginning of the story because that was a good story. Uh, so you were saying that you had this. Um, client that went to Capri. So he, she was a, um, a friend, she's just a friend of mine I met um, through Instagram mm -hmm. and she went in March um, when it's very cold and rainy in Capri because she doesn't like the beach and she was traveling around just to get an escape from work as a lawyer and the hotel noticed she was by herself and they knew they had a good friend that owned a restaurant mm -hmm. um, that was also single. So they told her that it's the best place to eat for solo travelers and they literally fell in love and it's not an exaggeration he wouldn't let her leave until he agreed to have a glass of wine with her and they ate dinner and wine at midnight and they still do that to this day so oh. she go it's so and two oh, beautiful so nice. babies okay. like now and and living in Capri? Yeah, they live on Anna Capri. And does the guy still own the restaurant? So what they did, they just sold the restaurant this year and they okay. started a cooking school oh, cool. um, on Anna Capri called Michelangelo. And now in their villa, you can go and cook with them and you can sit with them and um, yeah. Really cool. So if you want to meet two lovebirds, potentially you can go to the cooking school, Michelangelo and Anna Capri. That's so cool. That's a cute story. That is a very cute story. Uh, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, Cassandra, you have been so amazing for showing us around Sorrento. You're so good at your job. You're so good at the sharing. How do you say passion in Italian? Passione, Italiano. <laughs> so thank you so much for uh, uh, showing us the passion of Italy. Everyone keep being awesome and always keep on exploring. Ciao, Ciao amici. Nice to meet you all. Buonanotte. Let's uh, wave goodbye. Bye-bye. <laughs>